Welcome to a new video heat transfer. Today we're talking about external force convection. What is an external flow? An external flow is a flow that's bounded by a solid surface, but also unbounded to infinity. Two clear examples are flow over a flat plate, where a boundary layer develops downstream, but also flows over spheres or cylinders. Of course, in engineering, these flows are very important. Are important in aerodynamics because we want to compute the drag and lift. They are important in heat transfer because we want to study heat and cooling exchange between a solid surface and a fluid flowing over them. They are important in machines like turbines or compressors, but also, for example, in the study of urban canyons, so atmospheric flows in cities. So heat convection in external flows is a very hard problem to solve analytically. And therefore, we have to rely on computation or experiments. The main objective is to find the convection coefficient h. So in all the problems that we study up to now, h was given quantity, but now we can use correlations to find h. But before doing that, let's review a little bit physics of boundary layers. So we have discussed them in previous lessons. So if you have a flow over a flat plate, we have a region upstream where we have a laminar flow, so we have a thin laminar boundary layer where the, all the particles of fluid slide on top of each other. And further that stream, we have a turbulent region where the flow is fully turbulent. That's called the turbulent boundary layer. So we can uh, identify a location downstream that differentiates between the upstream laminar region and downstream turbulent region. So this location is usually called the critical distance indicated by Xc. And for in our engineering application, we can assume that the transition region is usually uh, thin. So quite short downstream. But if we want to consider how the friction and the heat transfer coefficient vary along X, this is a typical sketch. So the heat transfer convection coefficient and the friction coefficient CFX usually belong behave in this way. So during the laminar region, they both decrease from the leading edge until we get to the transition region where they increase because of the mixing. And then again, once the flow establishes to the fully turbulent regime, then we have a decrease of these quantities as the flow develops downstream. The location Xc, the critical location where the flow transitions from laminar regime to the turbulent regime, depends on many factors, for example, on the turbulence, on the free stream turbulence, so the fluctuation that exists in the free stream outside of the boundary layer depends on the roughness of the surface, on the surface temperature, but also on the geometry of the body, and so on the free stream, on the pressure gradient. So in general, since Xc depends on all these factors, it's quite hard to predict the critical Reynolds number, which is the non-dimensional way to express the location of transition. And the critical Reynolds number is defined as Xc times u infinity, so the free stream velocity divided by the kinematic viscosity. So if we're interested in friction, then there are correlations that allows us to find the skin friction coefficient. That's a non-dimensional wall shear stress. So we take the wall shear stress tau wall at the wall divided by one half rho u infinity squared, where the wall shear stress is defined as the dynamic viscosity times the partial derivative of the mean velocity u with respect to y evaluated at y equals zero. 
So the scheme friction coefficient is a local quantity, so it depends on the coordinate x. Now, if you're interested instead in the drag all over the plate, so the it's called global quantity, we can average CF, the local skin friction coefficient over X, over the length of the plate, and we can compute the global skin friction coefficient. So there are several correlations that allows us to compute the skin friction coefficient. And we have to be careful whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. So usually the critical Reynolds number in engineering application is taken as 5, 10 to the 5. So we have this correlation for the lamina, so we have a dependence on the Reynolds numbers minus 1 half. In the turbulent case, instead, we have the dependence on the Reynolds number as minus 1 fifth. So note that these are CFX, so depend on the Reynolds number based on x, the coordinates along the streamwise direction. If we average the local skin friction coefficient correlations, we can find correlation of the global CF, and now CF depends on the Reynolds number L, R, E, L, so based on the length L. Again, in the laminar case, we have a dependence on the Reynolds number as minus one half. Instead, in the turbulent case, we have a dependence on the Reynolds number as minus one fifth. So we also, of course, interested in convection and we want to com compute H. So in general, H depends on the coordinate X because we have a boundary layer that develops downstream. So this is the coordinate X. So if you remember, we have a thermal boundary layer and a kinematic boundary layer, they exist together. So in general, we can express H as a non-dimensional non-dimensional form. So we express this as a function of the Reynolds number based on X and on the Prenel number. So this is a non-dimensional form. In reality, of course, the H coefficient depends on the location X, on the thermal conductivity, on the kinematic viscosity and so on. But in this dimensional, non-dimensional form, then we can express the Nusser number is more compact way. Note that the skin friction coefficient just depends on the Reynolds number, where the Nusen number as a function of X depends also on the Prendel number. A typical form of the correlation that you'll have to use is usually algebraic. So the Nusen number as a function of X depends on constant times the Reynolds number to a coefficient M times the Prenel number to another coefficient n. So crucial question is to uh, find the temperature to use to evaluate the properties. So for example, let's say you want to compute the thermal conductivity of the fluid or the kinematic viscosity then this quantity depends on the temperature. So which temperature do you use? Because in general, in a thermal boundary layer, we have a temperature that depends on X and Y. So usually the procedure that we follow is that we consider the temperature of the surface, Ts, and the temperature at T infinity. That's a temperature in the free stream, so largely from the, from the plate. So by using these two quantities, then we can define a film temperature, which is nothing more than the algebraic average of Ts and T infinity. So once you compute Tf, then you can compute the thermal conductivity, the kinematic viscosity, the specific heat, and so on. So in the same way we computed the 
scheme friction coefficient as a function of x. Now we have computed Newton number as a function of Reynolds number, which depends on x. But what if we want instead an, a global h? The best way to do it is to average h along x and then define a global Newton number as a function of the Reynolds number based on the length L along which h is averaged. So Reynolds number is defined as L times u infinity divided by the kinematic viscosity. So then, then Q, the total heat transfer can be computed as H AS TS minus T infinity, where AS is the surface area, TS is a constant in this case along the X direction, and T infinity is the free stream uh, temperature. So let's look at the correlations for the heat transfer coefficient. Just like the correlations for the um, skin friction coefficient, now we have correlations for the heat transfer coefficient, so the Nusen number x, and they're different in laminar or in a turbulent case. Note that in the laminar case, this correlation, just like the skin friction coefficient, can be found analytically. So for the Nusen number depending on x in the laminar case, can be found by integrating the energy equation. In the turbulent case, instead we have to rely on computation or on experiments. These correlations are valid for isothermal plates, so the temperature along the surface is assumed to be constant. These are local heat transfer coefficient correlations, and we also have average heat transfer coefficient correlations, and these two, for the laminar and turbulent case, again are valid in isothermal conditions. Note here that you can use the laminar turbulent only when the Reynolds number that you compute is in these ranges. There is also an important correlation that's valid and any Reynolds number. These are for the global Nusen number. Has this form. So it's interesting because this is of course valid for both laminar and turbulent regimes because it's valid for any location along X. It's important to note here that if you take the limit as a Reynolds number based on L going to infinity here, then this part of the correlation is larger than this 871, which is a constant. So this can be dropped in the formula and we recover the turbulent correlation that we found earlier here this one. And this makes sense because as the Reynolds number grows, so if we are averaging for a longer distance L, then the laminar part of the boundary layer has a less impact on the global heat transfer. So in textbooks, you can find many other correlations. So you just have to be careful and use the one that you actually need. So you find correlation for unheated st starting lengths where the thermal conditions and the heat transfer is important only after a defined location. Or you can find correlation for un uniform heat flux. So instead of having isothermal conditions, you have that the gradient of the temperature of the wall is fixed. Also you find correlation in the cases of liquid methyl, so when the Prenel number is much, much smaller than one. Thanks for listening.